All right, family, Spencer Mack here. It has been one whole year since I began my experiment to see if I could gain muscle mass on a calorically restricted intermittent fasting diet. Not only that, as also vegan, for a period of time I was ketogenic. I've gone through a lot of waves through this, some failures, some successes. I've shared them along the way. I'm going to do an overall review and an update of where I stand right now. As of right now, I'm 20 pounds heavier than I was a year ago. Granted, I was extremely lean and I have increased my calories about 30%. I went from 13 to 1500 calories and now I'm under 2000. I've been under 2000 90, 95% of the time this entire year. I've had to change my macros around multiple times trying to find what really suits me, trying to find what really satiates me throughout the day so that I can maintain my training, maintain my work, and actually develop and grow in this period. I find myself now back where I began doing a ketogenic diet once again. For me, with my metabolism, a high fat diet, a low carb diet works for me. When I first started doing the ketogenic diet a year and a half or so ago, I found out that I basically was pre-diabetic. Well, technically I was. I was waking up in the morning with blood sugar of 110, 112. Even though I looked like I was in good shape, I was pre-diabetic. Growing up on tons of sugar, serious food addiction, serious uh, consumption issues blood sugar issues, fluctuation in energy, and the emotional roller coaster that comes along with that. I've made multiple videos in the past about that. So a lot of my struggle and my trial into diet has been trying to heal some of these issues, some of these fluctuations in energy that I have. So for me, I find myself back at consuming higher fat, lower carb. That has been really helpful for me to be satiated throughout the day. And I've found the ketogenic diet makes fasting much easier for other people that I've worked with as well. Another element for me has been increasing the protein content of my diet. I'm now closer to one gram per pound, and I don't actually believe I need that much to gain mass, but it's extremely satiating for me. So I've been sticking with that. I'm still working on figuring out what the optimal number is for me. Um, I don't know if I said this already, but I started off at 136 pounds. I'm 155 now, so I've gained about 20 pounds just by increasing the calories, 500, 500 calories. And I don't feel I've been a very good experiment in the sense to see how rapidly I could gain mass because I've had multiple injuries in the last few months, um, namely my elbow, which has been around for about three months now. I was way into gym rings and pull-ups and got into muscle-ups, and then I basically developed a tennis elbow. It's been around for a while, but it's starting to go away now, so that's good news. I actually attribute that, what I believe is the anti-inflammatory effect of the ALA is the alpha linolenic acid omega-3 that I've been consuming really high quantities of the last month or so. Um, so with that coming back, hopefully I'll be able to really start hitting the upper body. However, my lower body, I've been able to continue to train because I bought a hex bar. If you're unfamiliar with the hex bar, I highly recommend learning how to use those things. Super simple really direct way you can put a lot of weight on your legs. I have it set up in a place that I go by regularly. I hit it multiple times a day. And so I've definitely gained weight and strength in my legs. My lifts and my strength in the hex bar have gone way up since I got that. So I do believe a lot of my weight is actually in my legs, which thank God. <laughs> so I've actually minimized my training in order to be able to maintain my work as well and I really like where I find myself in my training right now. I'm basically doing really short duration, high intensity training twice a day. I was either doing hill sprints, uh, hex bar lifts, or uh, squat thrusters. 
Something that really taxes the whole body can push me beyond my VO2 max, what they call super maximal training. And just for a short period of time, my training takes like 10 or 15 minutes, warm up and everything. And so I've just been doing that twice a day. I find it really efficient. I don't get too sore to where I don't want to train the next day. And that's the path I've been on for about a month. I'm really liking that one. I want to share more of the specifics on that in the future. That being said, I wore a heart rate monitor yesterday. I got one to train some experiments with my training and also it can be used as a meditation aid by watching your heart rate variability. And I wore it from the very beginning of the day yesterday through my training, through my work, and by one o'clock in the afternoon it said I had used 17 to 1800 calories working on the land, which I farm, I do a lot of work. Uh, cultivating, smashing weeds, cutting up trees, pruning, all that jazz. And that combined with my training said that I spent almost my entire day's caloric value <laughs> by one o'clock. So either their algorithm is way off or my body has become much more efficient, which I know for a fact happens after chronic caloric restriction. I've seen it happen in myself. My body's ability to utilize energy and nutrition is definitely much improved. Some of the things that have really helped me to be able to maintain this, like I said, higher protein makes the satiation a lot easier. I'm working on getting that down. I really want to find the ideal level because I know higher protein um, can actually degrade proteins in your body. You have too much urea, too much nitrogen in your body. It degrades the protein and it's one of the major contributors to aging. So ultimately I want to get that down as low as possible. Um, lower carb works for me and also just getting really good sleep. Trade your lunch time for a nap, try that one out. Um, resting more, getting good sleep has really been key to me being able to maintain this and not overtraining, taxing myself to the point where I'm tired and I'm more likely to overeat and less likely to train. It's all been key for me. So yeah, here I stand. <sighs> Ah, shoulders. Like I said, um, I've been limited to training my upper body, but really hitting those legs has been nice, and I know that helps my whole body develop as a whole. But once I heal from this injury, I'm stoked to see what I can really gain. I'm going to slowly, gradually take my calories down because I know I can be at less. I'm definitely indulging more than I need, and I am always looking to really get refined, ride right that fine line. Um, yeah, what an amazing experiment to actually be able to gain, develop mass on a calorically restricted diet. Somebody my age with my activity output, they'd say at least 2,800 calories. I've seen studies taking athletes of my age and weight and putting them around 2,200 calories, 21, and they considered that a 40% caloric restriction. So I'm around 40 or 50%, I believe, and I find that quite fascinating. Um, my main intake for protein is soy. Um, like I said, I've been directing my diet more towards fats and I've been focusing on the essential fatty acids, namely omega-3 or alpha-linolenic acid that's found in flax seeds, chia seeds, and sachi inchi. So those are my main staples as of now for the last couple months and I'm finding that to be really beneficial as well read some studies that the more that ALA gets incorporated into your adipose tissue, the more leptin is released. And leptin is responsible, basically it signals us that we are full and it's time to get into activity. It makes, it stimulates motor activity. You actually want to move. So I believe that's something that I've struggled with in the past is leptin insensitivity um, due to just overeating, high sugar diet, all sorts of uh, factors that contributed to that that I believe really compounded my lethargy and my fatigue that I've struggled with over the years and I'm definitely in a much better, much more stable place now than I've been in over a decade and I've been attempting health and wellness through different practices for about 12 years now. So this formula, this practice has been a blessing. It's definitely taken a lot of trial and error over and over again. But uh, I'm stoked, I'm happy, feeling healthy, and 
the level of difficulty that I endure now is a fraction of where I was when I started. My body certainly adapted and just gotten used to only eating one meal a day. Noted, I've definitely taken um, breaks. There are times over the last couple of years to where I was eating mid-afternoon in the evening for a period of a week or two. But even that, trialing that just wasn't as ideal as where I find myself now. So, amazing experiment. Feeling good, I like where my body's at, I like where my strength is at. Um, yeah, so just gonna keep continuing, chipping away, sharing more. Please share your questions. Let's keep the thing going. Stimulate more sharing and build this community. I really appreciate all the people I've gotten to meet through here, the connections I've made and the support that I've gotten. I really appreciate it. I've gotten to meet some of you directly through Skype because I offer Skype consultations for anybody who's interested in them. And that's been a very educational experience as well as fulfilling to see people uh, take it up a notch. So lots of love to you guys and I'll keep you guys updated. All right, aloha.